This is the cover of my novel Rebellion, which was published by Penguin Random House in 2015. It's the second of my trilogy about the Wars of the Roses. I think Penguin have done a wonderful job of the production of these novels. I love the way they look. This novel continues the story of Margaret Beaufort and her son Henry Tudor. It begins just after the Battle of Toton in 1461 and goes up to the Battle of Tewkesbury in 1471. It always seems to me that the Wars of the Roses fall naturally into three parts, marked by significant battles. After Toton, for instance, we had a new king, Edward IV, but Tewkesbury really marked the end of the House of Lancaster, and this wasn't restored until 13 years later at Bosworth, so these are epic shifts in English history. Apart from telling the story of Margaret Beaufort, who has been separated from her only son after Toton and is campaigning to get him back, the novel tells the story of Henry VI and Margaret of Anjou, the king and queen who have gone into exile after Toton. At first they flee to Scotland, then Margaret of Anjou travels to France to seek the support of her cousin, the French king. Louis XI. She returns with some French troops and retakes several castles in the north. Margaret's story at this time is very dramatic. It involves kidnapping, shipwreck, destitution and combat. All the time she keeps her young son Prince Edward with her, protecting him and fighting for his right to the throne. He has been disinherited by the Yorkists. This is an extract from a chronicle telling the story of what happened to her after losing one battle near Norham. She and the little prince are lost in a forest when they are set upon by robbers. She escapes, ultimately, and is led by one of the robbers into a cave. From there, she made her way back into Scotland. But Henry VI's story is also dramatic. He goes into hiding, firstly in Scotland, then in the north of England. With only a few companions with him, he seeks shelter in the houses of Lancastrian sympathisers, frequently travelling rough. In 1465, he was finally betrayed in Waddington Hall near Clitheroe and taken prisoner. In London, he was paraded through the streets tied to a small horse and wearing a straw hat on his head, then taken to the tower where he remained imprisoned for the next five years. Margaret of Anjou fought on, but was forced to return to France. These chronicle accounts are woven into my novels just because they so eloquently convey the flavour of the time. Rebellion also tells the story of King Edward and Queen Elizabeth, which is no less dramatic. After Toton, Elizabeth Woodville intercepted the new King Edward in order to plead for the rights of her Lancastrian family. He became enamoured with her, but the story is that she refused to sleep with him even when he threatened rape, until he married her. They married in secret, and when the secret was finally disclosed, both the court and Edward's family were appalled. The figure on the left is the Earl of Warwick, who is initially Edward's greatest supporter, and in fact is frequently known as Kingmaker. He was particularly outraged by the marriage, since he was attempting to create a match for Edward in France at the time. And he was even further put out when Edward refused to consider marrying his two brothers to Warwick's daughters. Warwick increasingly allied himself with Edward's brother George, Duke of Clarence. The second image is of George with Isabel, Warwick's older daughter. They married secretly in Calais in 1469 against the wishes of King Edward. Then Warwick and Clarence staged a coup, but were ultimately forced to flee to France. Isabel gave birth under difficult conditions on a ship outside Calais and the baby did not survive. In France, Warwick managed to ally himself with his former enemy, Margaret of Anjou, and he married his younger daughter, Anne, to her son, Prince Edward. They returned with the backing of French troops and forced King Edward to flee to Burgundy. Elizabeth Woodville took refuge in the sanctuary at Westminster at this time, where she would give birth to Edward's first son. They already had three daughters and Elizabeth had two sons from her first marriage. This baby was named Edward after his father and he would be heir to the throne if his father could reclaim the kingdom. 
because meanwhile Warwick and Clarence had released Henry VI from the tower and declared him king once more. However, Edward did return in 1471 and he did reclaim the kingdom. Elizabeth and her children were released from sanctuary. And Edward fought Warwick at the Battle of Barnet in April 1471, where the Earl was killed. This battle was followed almost immediately by the Battle of Tewkesbury. Margaret of Anjou's forces landed and when she was told of Warwick's defeat she was devastated. However, they made the long march to Tewkesbury where the young prince fought in his first battle. He was killed in it and Margaret of Anjou was taken prisoner. She was imprisoned in the Tower of London, taken to London in Edward IV's train. Her husband, also in prison in the Tower, was killed there that night. So this is often referred to as the end of the House of Lancaster. So much happened at this time, it is difficult to keep up with all the twists and turns of events. So many people, so many deaths. However, none of my novels always return to Margaret Beaufort and her long campaign to retrieve her son. Her third husband, with whom she was said to have had a good relationship, was killed at Barnet. Jasper Tudor was on his way to fight at Tewkesbury when he heard of the disastrous defeat. He had Henry with him and together they made their way into exile in Brittany, where they would remain for the next 14 years. So, as after Toten, Margaret is further separated from her son, the distance between them is greater than ever. But she doesn't give up and in the third novel, Accession, she is forced to resort to extreme measures.